such an idiot. Why didn't I do this 10 months ago? Look at that, 30 pounds of booze. All right, here I have a 97 P-Pump 12 valve that has 960,000 kilometers on it. I don't know much about the engine other than it came out of that cab and that chassis. Hood for sale if you want it. So the only thing left to do with it is take it apart and see what a million kilometers does to a 12 valve engine. First off, I can tell you that it leaks. <laughs> so uh, we got oil all over the front timing cover. We got oil building up on the idler. Uh, the turbo is not bad. It's got a tiny bit of play. Could be replaced and, and take this with a grain of salt. Any of these parts could have been replaced. But uh, I can guarantee you the transmission has been rebuilt. But what we're going to start with is taking the P-Pump off. And we're going to get that flow tested to see what a million kilometers does to a P-Pump. Uh, and that's not to say it hasn't been rebuilt before, but that's just what we're going to do. Then we're going to throw our slider, our fuel plate in here, put governor springs in it, and then this pump will end up going on my track because I can't be down my track. So I'll pull the one pump off and put the other one back on again, or this one back on again. So we'll wash this engine up anyway and pull the valve, the valve covers off and maybe the oil pan, see what it looks like underneath, and then go from there. Uh, the oil looks good. So that's a plus. It has oil in it and it's not even that black. So I think they were up on their service. Uh, the coolant looked really good, so I saved that. And that used to be a food delivery truck. So on the road all day, every day. So here we go. All right, so first thing to do, see if it even turns over. I never even actually tried. Oh, do you hear that? That's some crustiness. I think it's just a belt. There we go. It's been sitting for a while. Can you see that rest? All right, there we go. That's as far as it turns. See if it turns over. I took the fan off just so I don't do anything stupid. doesn't sound very good. Maybe it's a battery, I'll throw another battery on it, but uh, I don't know about this one. Well, this here might have something to do with it. I hope they didn't scrap it because they couldn't get it going. And all it was was a really bad ground. That would have been sad. Like, oh, that engine doesn't sound healthy. And you know what? I think this is tight. Yep, just not enough washers on it. Well, that's stupid. I think somebody scrapped a Dodge truck because they didn't know how to tighten the bolt. Oh, sit tight. Well, that sounds better. Let's give it some fuel, see if it'll start. Crack the injector lines. Give it some full throttle. Six injector spraying. So let's close that up. Alrighty. One more time. Maybe not full throttle this time. Maybe half throttle. Okay.
<laughs> it's alive! Alright. And that is what a half hour and a million kilometer engine sounds like. <laughs> I can't believe that. Let's pull some valve covers, see what it looks like underneath, and then we're going to pull the pump. Here we go. Okay, so it's actually a couple days later. I was just kind of goofing off of this because I had a little bit of time, but I got to thinking, I wonder how much blow body is coming out of this cap here. 960,000 kilometers. A uh, little bit of moisture, maybe. Lay that on there. Actually, let's we'll put that in one turn. We'll fire it up. We'll take a look at that cap. And uh, that'd be interesting because uh, I'd almost do an oil analysis on this and send it. <laughs> put it in something. She failed the blow-by test. Oh, that's too bad. So a million kilometers does do that to an engine. Well, um, let's pull a valve cover real quick. I gotta go in about 20 minutes, but let's pull a valve cover, see what it looks like underneath the valve cover. Got a lot of stuff going on. I'm gonna need the pump for now. We'll see if we can tear this down to see what the rings look like, but I don't have the fine, I don't, it's not one of the projects right now that I wanna put any money into. Um, so if I pull the head, then I got parts kind of laying around. Definitely needs to be ringed and bearings and we'll get the head done. But for now, I just want the pump. It'll probably end up just going on the shelf. So yeah, let's pull some valve covers, see what they look like. That's pretty clean. That's a nice cheap way to look in and say, wow, they did some oil changes, whatnot. Um, if you're looking at an engine like this, a P-pump is worth money any day of the week. Just because unlike the VE pump, these pumps all have individual pumps for each cylinder and you can take these plungers out and put much much bigger ones in there and uh, really open up these engines uh, basically the 12 valves are the engine of choice for like pull trucks now this even though this one has a million kilometers on it um, you can see these these hoses really aren't in that these pipes aren't in that bad of shape they've got some uh, like the paint uh, flaked off obviously like if your coolant lines look more like this, then you know that he, you know what it's it might be time to let it go engine wise, but P pump is always worth some cash. So uh, this one, I'd like to tear it down and rebuild it and show you what uh, how much ring uh, wears on the cylinders and stuff like that. But right now I don't have the finances to do that. I have other projects in the shop that I got to get to first. I grabbed this because it was a P-pump and supposedly the transmission is good. So that one will probably end up going to the project. Um, I'm thinking maybe we got, I got some bad news about the Tahoe. So we got to figure out what we're doing there. And I still have that convertible out back too, um, which means I got room for the transmission. 
but not for the engine right now. So I'm gonna take the pump off, get it rebuilt, get it flow checked, take you guys along for the ride. We'll, we'll flow check it stock. We'll do this, some upgrades to the pump. We'll flow check it on the bench again to see what the difference is. And then this will be going on my truck and then the pump from mine eventually will get rebuilt and get put on this one. Um, uh, I would buy this engine for the parts. I've got room to store it inside. And like I said, the P-Pump is worth money any day of the week. Um, probably eventually we'll get to tearing this down and showing you what, uh, what a million kilometers does to it. I think this one is a worthy candidate to be get rebuilt. I just couldn't throw it away. So um, that's about all I can do for this one, this engine. Kind of neat, fired right up. These things just keep going and going and going. All right, thanks for watching. Here we go. All right, we're gonna take, I'm gonna take the pump off just for demonstration purposes, and I think I have a leak behind there. You can put the fuel plate and the governor springs in while leaving the pump on. Um, I'm not going to because I can't really get good camera shots in there, it's dark. We don't have the best uh, equipment yet because I break everything. So I'm gonna show you how to pull the pump off and then we'll do it on the bench. Um, start by pulling your air cleaner off and your injection lines. If you need a video on that, you're watching the wrong channel. Um, we're gonna pull off our front uh, oil fill. So this part just unscrews that way and then this way. And then you'll see a big nut there that's inch and a quarter. So we're gonna crack that nut loose and then we're going to spin it over and find top dead center on a little flag on the side of the injection pump. Guess we can stick it in gear. That works too. If you find top dead center first, put the flag in and then put your bar in here and turn it, you'll snap that little flag. But this is a pressed on gear, so just taking that nut off won't change anything. It'll still turn it over. It doesn't have to do any hard work because your injection lines are off. So um, then you can find top dead center. Then you can pull the gear off. Then you can take all the mounts off. And I'll show you how to do that. Here we go. All right. So there's your return line. There's a, if you see that bolt right there, usually there's a clamp on there that holds this return line on. Mine's long been rotted away, so I, I put that on there, but you do have to take that bolt off. That's a mounting bolt. And there's one on the other side, there it is. Then your oil feed line is right there. Now if you can see where my camera's pointing, um, roughly straight, a little bit off to the side of your shutoff, there is a port there that looks like this. Take that off and then in that is a little flag. Now this is, this just goes in backwards. So normally this little flag is in. This is what sets your timing, but you got to find the flag. Now it, the, it turns once for every tw two rotations of the engine. So you got to use like your camera, see how the, can't really see it, but there's the hole. Now we got a nice little Milwaukee camera here. Um, if you don't have one of these, they're not, they're only, they're super inexpensive now. Um, you can use a mirror to try and find that flag. You just turn it over until you see a flag poke out and then you can pop this back in again, pop this cover on and your pump will stay at top dead center. Number one, um, when you take it off with no chance of it moving. If it moves and you pop it back on wherever, it will not fire or it'll smoke or it'll be laggy. Um, whatever timing your engine is set at, whether it's 14 or 16 or wherever it is, this pump will be flagged the same time there's a there's a little tag on the back of the cam gear or same thing so you you peg your engine and you peg your pump but you don't need to peg the engine as long as you don't move it so um i'll, uh, I'll have a better view of that once the pump's out of the way so here we go okay so that drive gear on the input shaft is a press fit so take the nut off and then um, there's no room for the actual driver for the puller to go in between the rad, but you can just tighten the bolts until, until you hear a pop. It's a little bit scary. I did it off camera. I should have recorded, sorry. But even if you don't have this puller, just a plate, of, a thick plate of steel with two holes drilled in it, slotted holes that line up with the gear and it will uh, pop off. When you put it back on again, you have to make sure that the gear is spotlessly clean and same with the taper on the input shaft. It's a lot of hard work 
turning this pump, especially if you turn it up, so that gear will slide on the input shaft and change your timing. So it will delay the timing and you'll start smoking and have hard start up. So uh -oh, just keep that in mind. All right, of course, I miss me pulling that out, but you can see there is the tab that um, times the cam gear. I think it's the cam gear. You see this little knob pushes into, I don't know if the camera can see it. Nope. Anyway, there's a hole that this goes into that times your engine, but we didn't just don't, don't rotate your engine at all. Otherwise you just gotta find this back and pop it in. So let's get going on that pump. I think this is my air, my leak right here is this is, it's tight, but I think it's leaking. So we're going to snug that up. Okay, so we've got our pump here. I've pulled my little flag back out again, so because I'm gonna be spinning the pump, um, and pulled this plate, this little cover off, which uh, exposes the governor springs in behind there. Now there's multiple springs, and therefore the idle, the mid, and the top end. Now you can't, uh, what happens is as your engine is revving up, these weights, the centrifugal force wants to come out and that's fighting against your rack. So the, fa the, the farther they're out, um, the more it tells the rack to come back again because you're, you don't want to overspeed a diesel. Um, now you're saying, why can't I just tighten the springs that are already in there? You can't do that because um, it's one plunger at the top. This is, there's, one, there's one plunger at the top that pushes against all three springs. And if you tighten the top RPM spring, your idle is going to be affected and it's going to idle like shit. Um, I tried it, not worth it. So we'll spin it around until we see um, what we're looking at and go from there. <laughs> of course not. How about I grab the nut? All right, so we pulled out our little flag so we can spin it around. We spun it out till we can see it. First thing we want to do is mark it so we can put it back in the same spot that it was in. Now, your kit comes with three, three springs, the bottom plunger, and a warranty card. I'm going to take the warranty card and just stick that in the bottom here. And that just helps in case you feel like dropping something. It's just kind of cheap insurance there so that it doesn't fall out. Then you want to take your micrometer and measure the distance from in the groove to the top of the plunger. Should be somewhere between 30 and 50 thou. Mine is 30 thou. Then you can take a screwdriver and spin this out. It's just a little wave at the bottom that keeps this thing from spinning out. It doesn't seem like much, but when it's spinning and this plunger is, or the springs are pushing against it, there really is nothing that um, will make that fall out. You can grab this top plunger. You can take the three springs out. Careful that there's shims underneath there. You can leave the very outside one in, just don't touch that one. Why you ask? Because I say so. I always tell my kids. You can use a magnet, which probably works better. Can't find mine right now. Throw your bottom plunger in. And that's it. Okay, so when we're talking about P-pumps, not all P-pumps are the same. Um, you keep in mind that the Cummins, because it's the best engine out there, the 12 valve, it's not only in Dodge trucks, but it's also in Ford heavier equipment trucks, which was the F-800s, also in excavators, Case used them. 
Um, they were in great all excavators, they're in multiple gen sets, coolers, they're all over the world and they're all a little bit different. For this sake, we'll talk about just the Dodge setup. If you're going into an industrial setup, um, a lot of these brackets are missing that really that you really do need. Uh, makes it easier to set up for throwing it into a vehicle or into a conversion. Um, the Dodge ones from 94 to 96, the automatics were 160 horse and the manuals were 175. Um, the 96 to 98 automatics were I think were 175 horsepower and the 94 to 96 manuals were 215 horsepower. So if you can, uh, to start off with, you uh, um, try to find a manual between 94 or 96 and 98 because that is the pump that you want. What's really nice about the P-Pump is that each one of these is an individual plunger and each one delivers fuel to its individual cylinder. Whereas like a rotary pump, the VE is just one pump and it, and it, and it rotates the pumping to the different cylinders. Uh, this one has a lot more capability of more horsepower because you can take these plungers out and do all sorts of fun, neat things with them. So that's into high horsepower. Uh, you can get like 2,000 horsepower out of these things. So um, for now, I got to throw these back in again. I did put a fuel plate in here. I put a number eight fuel plate in it while the battery was charging. I gave my camera to Aaron and I'm short cameras and cards now. I actually stole this card out of my wife's camera, so she's going to be pissed. Um, but she loves me. So um, at least I'm not cooking car parts in the oven or in the dishwasher today. I will throw this pump back in again. Uh, I need it for tonight and uh, see what kind of difference that makes. I have to tune a little bit with my uh, spring. I put a little bit more tension against it so that we get more fuel as we're coming into boost. And we just want a little puff of smoke as we're coming out. Um, no rolling coal out because that's just stupid. So here we go. All right, now this next step is about the most important step that you need to do. And that is Nope, not that. <laughs> this. Brake clean. That shaft has to be spotless. Um, if there's any oil on there at all, it will slip on you, change the timing, leave you by the side of the road. Not very much fun. You can take some 600 grit sandpaper and just just scuff it just take the shine off just kind of because you want it to anti-slip that way and then definitely break clean um, the gear under the hood as well now it's extremely difficult if you do get oil on there to clean it off afterwards basically you got to pull the pump off again because that or the front cover whatever you want but um what happens is if you use brake clean to try and clean it from the front there and try to spray it in, it just makes a big mess. This whole thing is covered in oil. If you try to blow dry it clean, you just spray all that oil around there. If you, like we're going to turn this pump up, or we've turned this pump up, so it's going to, it's going to be doing more work than it was before. Um, so, <laughs> I'm sorry, I just, um, my daughter, acts like I do and I just realized it that she she always goes so and, and I'm doing it in the video right now anyway we're gonna clean that with brake clean uh, if you have to if you don't have time to pull the pump off if you're by the side of the road go to your wife's purse and grab a bunch of q-tips and um, maybe some gas if you got it some um, rubbing alcohol and soak it in there and try to clean Try, try to get that in between the shaft and clean the gear off. Do not blow it dry because you'll spray all that oil around in there. Um, I've heard of using uh, valve lapping compound on there or green Loctite. You can try that. Or you can buy a, um, uh, you see there's a keyway there. You go, why wouldn't, why wouldn't they key it? Well, you can't change your timing then. Um, and every one of these pumps is a little different. So, um, Timing for an automatic or standard might be different than uh, whatever else. But um, because this engine is used in so many um, different applications, like the excavator might have uh, a keyed gear on there um, because it's the best engine that was ever made. So it's just used all over the place. Now you can get an adjustable timing gear for that and that'll only set you back. See, now I messed that up again. I put oil on it. Um, that'll only set you back about 400 bucks and that'll use a keyway and then there's three bolts to keep it from slipping rather than just one at the end there. So 
Um, that is the number one. Good thing you kept watching the whole video because otherwise you'd be driving down the road going, woo, oh, oh. So throw it back in again. Installation's really simple. It's the opposite of removal. Just watch the video in reverse. Um, camera angle's always suck and I wanna get this truck going. So um, here we go. Okay. So this pump might look really light but I can assure you that it is not. <laughs> so this is a good way to throw your back out. Um, the way I do it is rest your elbows on pretty well the rad support and then just use your biceps. Don't use your back. Uh, and then you can cancel your gym membership. Remember, don't skip leg day. There it is. Nice. Well, that's not normal. That just bolted right out. Ugh. So we got all the truck back together again. The truck rides 10% better. And I, I, was, I have 373 gears in here and uh, I bought a lower gear set because I thought the truck was revving out at probably 2200 RPM doing about 105 kilometers an hour. I got no problem doing 130 kilometers an hour in theory. Don't ask how I know that. But um, just if you have a P pump, go get yourself some governor springs. Go get yourself a fuel plate. You won't regret it. Um, comment down below. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. This is honestly the best thing you can do to a P pump on a very limited budget. I would have done it earlier. Um, governor springs are about 200 bucks. We'll put the link down below. The fuel plate was about the same, about 170. So with the mods, I'm sure that I'm gonna get better fuel mileage. Um, we ha don't have a chance to hook the trailer up to it and tow anything heavy uh, before this video releases, but we're gonna do some more long trips with it and we'll do another update for sure on the uh, average fuel economy. And, and I would have done it sooner, would have done the mod sooner. I didn't have time, and honestly, I didn't have the, the few hundred bucks. We spent all the money on the Audi. Thanks to everyone who supported us on Patreon to make this mod happen. It's because of Patreon we were able to tune the truck. The next mod that we're aiming to do is the exhaust brake. Um, we're about 100 bucks a month away from that goal, but then we'll show you whether that's worth installing or not. So thanks again. Here we go. Oh, yeah. And there used to be a there used to be a Cummins here with a transmission on it. And I, I'd love to take one of these Cummins and just tear it down with you guys and say this is what a scrap Cummins looked like a million kilometers on it. But honestly, it ran pretty good. I put it on Kijiji, and it sold within 12 hours. I, the price was was uh, according to it. I said it was mild out and needed a rebuild, um, and that's exactly what the guy's gonna do. So. Um, you're gonna have to stick around for another another video. Maybe we could find one with two million kilometers on it. We could tear that down and see what the guts look like. But it fired right up. It didn't really smoke. So um, yeah, stick around, I guess. I'm sure there's more comings around here somewhere. Here we go.